welcome to Logan Sounds Off, where I talk about books, music, and a whole lot more. I'm your host, Logan Kelly. Hello, and welcome to Logan Sounds Off. I'm your host, Logan Kelly. And I'm going to talk about music and books on my podcast. Today, though, I have a special, which is the best reads of 2023 so far. The first book that I'm going to start off with is Stephanie Meyer's Twilight. This is about a man called Edward Cullen and Bella Swan. And Bella Swan moves to the gloomy town of Forks and meets this mysterious, alluring Edward Cullen. And so her life takes a thrilling and terrifying turn. The thing about Edward is he's got porcelain skin, golden eyes and mesmerising voice and supernatural gifts. So Edward is both irresistible and impenetrable. But up until now he has managed to keep his true identity hidden. But Bella is determined to uncover his dark secret. What Bella doesn't realise is that the closer she gets to him, the more she is putting herself and those around her at risk, and it might be too late to turn back. This is an amazing, amazing novel. Um, I just read the blurb there. As you can see, it's gripping from the start. It's an amazing YA dark romance drama. And this is the first kind of romance book that I've read. I didn't find it that it affected the story at all. I still enjoyed it. But it was an amazing, amazing, amazing piece of work. So I've known about Twilight for a long time. I've just been waiting uh, to read it. So I read this about a year ago. Um, and I thought it was amazing. And I'm, I, I still haven't got to the sequel, New Moon. But it was an amazing, amazing book. But I also found it difficult in a way as well. Which I quite liked. So I have to say, Twilight is a brilliant, brilliant book to have on your shelf this summer. Moving on, I want to go on to an amazing, amazing book called Point Blank, and that's by Anthony Horowitz. Now, it's not technically Point Blank, it's Pont Blanc, which translates to White Point, and um, this is the second Alex Ryder mission. And basically, Pont Blanc is about after Alex is finished up with Stormbreaker, he does not want to go back um, to his past by life but anyways he still manages to go on this big mission to infiltrate um, school Pont Blanc. This is very interesting and very gripping as usual Anthony Horowitz um, the master of horror and thrilling thrilling books um, he has not only done kids books he has done teenage books he has done adult books he is a man of everything he was originally known for his horror and then he went full spy when he released the alex Ryder series i'm obviously not really talking about the more adult books here i'm talking about teenage kid stuff um i would say this alex Ryder series is more directed at ya audiences uh like twilight as well both ya audiences But even still, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant read. And I really enjoyed reading it this year. And next I want to move on to a book that... It's something that's been on the bottom of my wish list for a long time. But I was very, very much regretting that I hadn't put it at top. Because Joseph Delaney's The Spook's Apprentice definitely deserves to come 8th in my year, year reads list. Now, just a note, these are only books so far that I think deserve to be in this top 10 for this year. That I've read anyways. But yeah, this book is amazing for all fantasy fans. And it's quite a light read. It's about 200 200 pages. Sorry, I sound corrected. 300 pages. But the font is quite large, actually, in comparison to other books. And um, there's a lot of space in it. Um, it's hard to explain but if you pick up the book you'll know what I mean even still it's a brilliant 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 book but there's many books actually now there's The Apprentice, The Curse, The Secret, The Battle, The mis- the Mistake, The Sacrifice, The Nightmare, The Destiny, 
Um, I am Grimalkin, the blood. So, so I don't know, is it Slithers or Slither's Tale? There are so many great Spooks books, and unfortunately, I have not gone gotten to any other ones. But this one, book, the first one, I would say it says not to be read after dark. This isn't that scary. Like, it's a kid. I'd say this would be more directed at 9 to 11 year olds, but very, very, very good book nonetheless. Next, going back to some YA audiences, I want to move to Ravina Goron's This Book Kills. Um, I find, found this hard to read at night because I went, does this book actually kill? <laughs> that side of my brain was thinking. But this is a very, I've done reviews I've done a review on this book along with the Spooks Apprentice and Twilight before. Um, but this book, I this has to have some serious emphasis because this is one of the best books I've read in my life. Amazing. It's not now one of the best. It's good enough to be, be seventh in the list, I will say that. But it's about Hugh Henry Van Born, uh, one of the most popular and richest kids in um girl called Jess's school is found dead the student body is left wondering who the murder could be so Jess a student under tri strict instructions to keep her record clean or risk losing her scholarship finds herself at the center of the investigation when it's revealed that Hugh died the, in the exact same way as a character in a short story she wrote very interesting very gripping and also wow like very heavy not in like um uh uh maturity way that it's for older audiences, but it's just very 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 gripping, and definitely an amazing book, an amazing book to read, and I would recommend it to anybody. So next on my list is Dave Fanning's The Thing Is. This is a very 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 good book. Now. The thing about Dave Fanning's book is is that it's more teenage. I would say, anyways. I would say this is in and around um, older teens. But I read it not knowing this, and I found it an amazing, amazing, amazing read. I very much enjoyed it. And um, I find it very fun to read about Dave Fanning's career and what he's done and who he's talked to. It's amazing the amount of people he's talked to. Trust me, if you read the book, it's amazing. It's a biography by him and it's all based around music. It goes from his life to when he actually read, uh, wrote this book, which wasn't too long ago, but it w wasn't exactly um, a little while ago. It was um, 2010 that he wrote this. The text was copyrighted in 2010. So it's not that outdated and it's very, very good. So I would recommend it to anybody who wants a good biography read for this year. Next up, I'm going with another YA novel. This is a whopper of a book. Very hard to get through. 860 beautifully made pages. This is, of course, Inheritance. Book four of the Inheritance Cycle by Paolini, Christopher Paolini, and he is an amazing author. This is a very difficult book, I will say. 860 pages, and the font is not small. It's, sorry, not large. I mean, sorry. It's, it's not large now, but it's a very, very good book. Very, very good vocabulary throughout it, and just all around a great book to read. Um, and this will keep you going for a little while, so it won't be a complete waste of money like some other books are, because some books are thin and have very large font. Meanwhile, this, they fit everything in. The author, Christopher, fit everything into this. And I would definitely recommend it to anybody who wants to read a good fantasy novel this year. Next up, I'm obviously, I have to go with it, but Derek Landy's Hell Breaks Loose. Hell Breaks Loose is an amazing, amazing, amazing um, novel by Derek Landy, and it is a prequel to the series, so no spoilers. Um, and it's about Nefarian Serpine, um, who is by far the worst character in the whole book, in my opinion. Not because of like how bad, like it's it's wrote about him bad, but just I really don't like his character. He's really evil. 
just can't bear them. That's the, the kind of thing that I think about Serpine. But for those who have read the Skullduggery Pleasant series, it's not that great in comparison to others. But it's still amazing in comparison to other books. This is not top tier Skullduggery Pleasant at its best, but it's still pretty good. So next up, I'm going to move on to The Hunger Games. Suzanne Collins' iconic novel. Definitely the be one of the best books I've read this year. Third best, in fact. So we're in the top three now. I'm reading Catching Fire, actually, currently, the sequel. And just this series is amazing. And I will note, it does not have that much gore that people say. I once went on to Common Sense Media and I found people saying, it is 18 plus because it has um, some extreme, extreme, um, what's the word? Let me think that they, they used. They use extreme gore and very gory violence and very detailed descriptions of cadavers and everything. It was just, it was very, it made the Hunger Games sound like an awful, awful book. So, obviously, I, I immediately read it. <laughs> because I wanted to see, once and for all, what it was like. And it was amazing. It wasn't gory. Wasn't that violent? Well, I mean, it's about kids killing each other, I know that. But it's not that violent, you see. And it doesn't go too detailed into the gore. There are some graphic descriptions. I will say, this is not for younger kids, but it's still very, very good. I will have to say, this is a YA book and amazing. So at number two, number two, I'm going with Douglas Adams' The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Before I go any further, thank you to Rick O'Shea for giving me this book. It is amazing. I've got the 42nd anniversary edition. If you're wondering why 42nd, you're going to have to read the book to find out. But no, thank you so much, Rick. I really, really appreciate it. And um, actually, before I read Catching, I'm reading Catching Fire, before I started that, I was reading The rest Restaurant at the End of the Universe, which is the sequel. So, it's just an amazing series. Very weird, I will have to say. Douglas Adams is a very odd author. But, nonetheless, it is a brilliant book, and I was very happy with it. Um, of course, it's a sci-fi book, but it's hard to explain what it's like. This is the blurb now. It's an ordinary Thursday lunchtime for Arthur Dent until his house gets demolished. That's where I thought, okay, so this is a pretty average book. This changed my mind. The Earth follows shortly afterwards to make way for a new hyperspace express route. I sat down and I went, okay, and I continued. And his best friend has just announced that he's an alien. Okay, so everything happens very fast with this book. At this moment, they're hurtling through space with nothing but their towels and an innocuous looking book inscribed with the big friendly words, don't panic. Five stars all day long. I would definitely say this is suitable for more YA just because of some references in it. But apart from that, it's very, very good. Um, and I would recommend this to anybody who's 10 to 14, I'd say, will love this book. And even anybody who's older, adults will love this as well. It's just such a perfect novel and such a great, great novel to have in my collection. So I'm very grateful to Rick O'Shea. Thank you so much, Rick. I really appreciate it. Um, so, the big number one. I never thought I'd actually read this book, but I read... The Martian by Andy Weir, and this is by far one of the best books I've ever read. 400, and, uh, 400 pages of pure gold, I thought. This was an amazing sci-fi novel. I found it very, very interesting. Um, and I will say this is for more YA audiences because of some language it has in it. Just the language. But apart from that, is it is an amazing, amazing book. And... Um, very interesting and it's changed my mind on so many different things and also if you don't know that much about science it can tell you a lot like it can really really tell you a lot but that is why i'm rating that number one and if you don't read the other books please read this it deserves the attention it is perfect and read this 
the other book that he's wrote, Project Hail Mary and Artemis, if you have the time and you like Andy Weir. Now, personally, I didn't finish it, Project Hail Mary. I got to about page 200, but I had to say I prefer The Martian. That I'm going to leave it at that, okay? Um, But thank you so much for listening to this video, and I hope you look out for these books because they're very, very interesting. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Logan Sounds Off. You can follow me on X, Facebook and Instagram at Logan Sounds Off. And don't forget to subscribe and not miss any more cool episodes. Bye guys!